Yeah. All right, so here we are back at Borden at the Flak Panzer Restoration Project, and I'm right here with Neil, who's leading the team on the chassis. So can you tell us a little bit of what, about what you've done? Okay, so far today, uh, as you can see, the turret was removed the other day, which really freed things up for us as far as getting access to the back part of the vehicle because the overhang in the turret was stopping and blocking the uh, engine hatches from being opened up. So consequently, we have, uh, as they say, we've gone and tackled that today. A few wells were still holding it up, but of course the hinges were rusted solid. They had to be, uh, have the heat put to them and a bit of penetrating oil put on. But after a bit of persuasion with the uh, power of the lever, our friendly crowbar, and uh, a couple of the, uh, the lads up here working, we managed to get uh, the one hatch cover off of the engine that uh, covers up the radiator system. And the other hatch cover, we've just swung it right up on its hinges now. It contains the actual cooling fans, fans that are uh, driven internally off a uh, off universal jointed drive shaft. They, uh, they're, the, of course, the engine cooling for the uh, back part of the engine compartment. As they spin and draw, they pull air in from the outside through the vents in the back of the, uh, back of the sides of the tank and across the engine, across the radiators and push the hot air out the other side. Standard type of thing when you're trying to cool an automotive uh, application. Uh, in addition, we're gonna be working a little bit more on the road wheels today. One of our uh, idler wheels, which run across the, uh, support the track as it lays down on top is Somewhere in its life got damaged. It's got a large crack in it. Right now, we've got a couple of gentlemen back there uh, working on it, getting the seals off it so they can access the uh, large nut flange, that, or the flange nut that holds it on. Once we get that off, we'll be able to pull it out and it'll go out to our fabricator who's going to uh, do a repair job on it, weld up the crack on it and true it back up center as well. Uh, in addition, opening up those back hatches expose one of our other favorite friends in there, the uh, 70 years of accumulated biomass, i.e. plant matter, animal matter, and uh, numerous pounds of rust. So we're gonna be poking and pulling that stuff out as much as well as we can with the vacuum cleaner in our uh, own hands and shovels, hooks, whatever we can to get in all the nooks and crannies and get it cleaned out so we can see what we're actually working with in there. So is there any chance we can get up on top and have a look at all that? Certainly, we've got the uh, platform open, the whole uh, area where the normal turret would normally sit is open, so you might see a few feet down there, but the boys are working, so uh, yes, come on up in, the, uh, up in the step platform, you'll be able to get a good view and look right down inside the uh, fighting compartment as it would be in a regular tank. In this case, it's just going to be a hole down to the internal insides for the tank. So here we are on top of where they pulled off the turret inside the chassis, and they've already gone out uh, quite a bit of the biomatter that was in here with the vacuum, but other than that, can you tell us what you pulled out? Okay, as I said, we're standing in on a regular tank would be the fighting compartment uh, where the turret would sit. Of course, this is a flak panzer at a different configuration of a turret. It's been pulled out. Um, this is the remain of the ring where it used to spin on. You can see the uh, ball bearings that uh, allowed it to uh, rotate smoothly. They're a little bit rusty and, of course, going to need to be worked on. Uh, this is, of course, exposed a lot more for us to get at easier. You can now see the, we're standing what remains of the gas tank. It's a bad state of affairs. It's pretty well rotted out. Filled, of course, with our favorite, favorite debris, rust, dirt, and animal matter. Uh, again, one step at a time, we work on it and clean it as we go and expose what, uh, expose what has to be worked on. At the back here, as I explained before, we've opened up the back engine hatches and exposed the engine compartment. Under this hatch side here, you can see the uh, radiators, which would uh, cool the uh, cooling fluids that flow through the engine. And on the other side, you can see the uh, cooling fans. They are uh, disconnected from the drive shaft, the drives at the moment. Normally the, uh, proper, or the mechanics would go to the back, open up that back small hatch, pull away the gear that engages at the far end there, and this would allow this to be back hatch to be swung up. As you can see, both cooling fans are attached right to it, to the housing. Again, uh, problems with rust and everything, they're going to have to be all pulled apart and refurbished, but uh, one step at a time. Looking down inside, you can see the actual Maybach HL 120 engine. 120 is standing for it's basically a 12 liter V12, 12 cylinder, 300 horsepower gasoline engine. 
manufactured by Maybach, which uh, was a division of Mercedes-Benz at the time, I believe. Uh, the engine itself is, as we were afraid, rather uh, rather horror show and scary. It's been left there, of course, for seven years. It was exposed to the elements, so we're not expecting it to turn right over and run right away, <laughs> if ever. But we are definitely going to go through the motions as far as cleaning it, every, uh, cleaning everything up inside, and uh, making it uh, look as it should have with the time, the time it actually was in service and running. In addition, you can see a multitude of other things that are exposed once the turret came off. Down here, you can see where the batteries went at one time. The the uh, old battery cables are there. This rod that's going across here was actually the mechanical rod that the driver had used. He would turn on his ignition and pull on that rod. That actually was a, engaged the manual starter motor in there. It would, would uh, pull forward, engage the gear, and uh, start turning and turn over the uh, turn over the engine under normal things, a, a gear turning the uh, large gear in the flywheel of the engine. Um, multitude of uh, other things to be got at here as far as cleaning. As we can see, lots of rust and deterioration on the uh, tin work and the metal work in the inside. It's all going to be happy addressed eventually, but uh, the main thing is, is to get everything opened up, and get the worst of it out, and then start looking at things and going at one piece at a time. Again, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, and this certainly isn't going to be put back into its uh, proper order today, but slowly but surely, and of course along with the dedicated crew that we got working on it, we'll address each piece, get at it, refurbish it, and bring it back to as close as this original condition as we can. So as they pile marble block upon marble ba block to get back this particular version of Rome, we'll, uh, we'll be back with them every now and then in the, in the chassis. So, thanks. Thanks for your time. No problem. Come anytime. <laughs>